thank you so much for joining me on this episode of Black Voices in Conversation. It's a real privilege to have you on the program today. Um, let's just take it back to the beginning of your story, first of all. What was life like for you growing up and going to school in Exeter? I think it was difficult. I moved from London when I was about 10 years old. And when I moved here, that's when I first realized that I was different. I didn't see anyone that looked like me anymore. I didn't have access to the foods that I would normally eat or the hair products that I would usually use. And when I went to school, I was treated quite differently from other pupils. For example, I wasn't allowed my natural hair out, which is Afro hair, and I wasn't allowed braids, which is a protective style of my hair. When I did have my natural hair out, I was told by teachers that I was distracting pupils and that it was too much for them to deal with in the lesson and it meant that they couldn't learn. And then when I had braids, I was also told that that didn't fit in with the school rules. I also saw that I just wasn't given the same level of attention as pupils and that was quite difficult. Even my friends would question me and say, why are you treated differently to us? So it was quite a difficult transition for me. Back then, up until last year and the passing of George Floyd, how would you describe the conversation around racial equality in Exeter and Devon at the time? I think before I was speaking on deaf ears, I spoke about incidents in school. For example, once in a school I was in, in the junior school, a child threw food at me and they said, feed the African, feed the slave and comments along those lines. And the school never confronted the racism, but I kept going to the school, bringing up these racist incidents and letting them know that they really needed to deal with it. However, it was never dealt with. People in Devon seemed to believe that racism didn't really exist up until the George Floyd death and the movement that came with it. So it was previously like speaking on deaf ears. It was really difficult to keep speaking out about my own lived experiences and my peers' experience, but just not being heard. How does that make you feel? I think it's difficult knowing how much of a struggle it has been just to have my voice heard and have my truth denied. But once I saw a clear change that was encouraging for a better future, not only for myself, but for future generations. And you've just mentioned it there, the word change. Did the George Floyd passing and you know the movement that came from that, did you see a change in the conversation around it? racial equality in Devon from that? Definitely, I think, especially since being an organiser of the first Black Lives Matter protest in Exeter, it allowed black and other individuals from different races to speak their truth and speak about what's happening to them. It was almost like suddenly now we were being heard and we were being believed. And what was it in particular? in particular, would you say people were responding to? Was it the death of George Floyd? Was it more people speaking out about their lived experience? I think in Devon in particular, it was hearing the truths of people in Devon. Although to me, George Floyd is enough and all the other deaths before that were enough. But for a lot of people here, they still seem to distance themselves from it and say, oh, this is America. It's not what's happening here. But they seem to listen to what was happening on their own doorstep in their own town, which they thought was so kind, which they thought was the best community. So I would say that they responded best to hearing the truths of people in their own community. Something needs to change. People need to hear our voices. You all need to hear our experiences, our pains, our struggles. You need to understand what we go through on a day-to-day -day basis, but still manage to keep going. We don't stop and we won't stop. A year on from everything that did happen, what would you say is the general feeling towards the Black Lives Matter movement in Devon? I think it's difficult. It goes in waves. At one moment, everyone is looking out for people from different backgrounds and suddenly it is in their thought. But as soon as it's not trending on Instagram anymore, for example, no one is posting black squares anymore. It's not a trendy thing to be involved with it's like people forget that it's our experience, whether it is trending or not. But there are definitely changes that I've seen being made. For example, when I'm working with schools and going into schools, I can see change happening there. And you've just touched on the work you're doing with schools. Can you just go into a bit more detail about what you've been doing over the last few months? Yeah, so since organizing the protest, 
I've been working with over 70 schools across the Southwest on equality, diversity and inclusion. So I've been a consultant for head teachers and teachers, and I've also been delivering workshops and assemblies to pupils. I've held a safe space in schools where pupils can even just ask difficult questions, which they may have not been able to before. And it's also allowed pupils that have faced racism and other experiences just because they're different. They've had a safe space where they can come forward. Are people still doing the work, Maya? Because you've touched on how massive this was last year and you couldn't scroll through your newsfeed without seeing something about the Black Lives Matter movement. But is that work still being done to the extent it was? I, I can speak for myself and say I'm working as hard, if not harder than I was before. But I do think there are a lot of people that it's almost become a tick box exercise and because it's not being pushed in their face every single day as it may be in mine and other people who actually face this on a daily basis it does go to the back of their mind but it's just important that everyone remembers that just because you aren't hearing about it as often it doesn't mean that it isn't still happening so i do think it's not in all areas not as much work is being done but there is a lot more pressure for work to be done and people are being held more accountable and you've just mentioned accountability there. Derek Chauvin, the police officer who was filmed kneeling on George Floyd's neck, was found guilty on three charges of murder and manslaughter last month by a US jury. How do you think that verdict can and perhaps will impact the movement here, particularly in the Southwest? I think it's shown that people will get held accountable for their actions, but I wouldn't say that it is justice. I think it's impacted the movement here to show that if you do something wrong, if you are racist, you will be punished. You can't get away with it. It's not an excusable thing as it might once have been to people previously, but I don't think that it is justice because it shouldn't have happened in the first place. His life has still been lost and many lives have still been lost. I know you've been doing a lot of work with Devon and Cornwall Police. In terms of the conversations you've had there, what have they been like in terms of tackling racism within the county? The conversations have been positive. They've been willing to listen. For example, the police at the protests were supportive. They were listening. They did kneel down and respect what we were doing. But I think it needs to be more than conversation. I've had a lot of conversation with them, but I need to see action. I need to see change in figures. I need to see black and other minority individuals involved in the work and leading the change themselves. So I think although work has been done, I've done a lot of work with the council as well, who I'm doing a race audit for, and I can see that the work's being done, but it's just important that we keep going and it isn't a tick box exercise. And how do you show that the work progresses and it does continue and it's not a tick box exercise which you've just touched on for me i everyone i have worked with i do hold them accountable for their actions and for their promises that they have made so i do follow up on every promise that i've been made although it is a lot of work i am going back saying you said to me by this time this would be done have you done it yet do you need help achieving it and how can we get there so i think it is a lot of pressure on one individual and it is hard, but I think coming down from central government, then there would be real pressure than one individual continuously going to different organisations trying to get the message out. At this point on following everything that happened, what did you envision life would be like, just everyday life would be like for people of colour in Exeter and Devon? I think I envisioned that there would be a long journey so I knew for myself it wouldn't just be instant change. A lot of people I know thought that the protests would happen and suddenly our lives would change, but people have been fighting for years and years. So I do know it's going to be a long journey, but I think there's a lot more pressure as well, putting myself in that position. So I think I thought that life would change for the positive, but there have also been negatives that have come with it. And does the reality reflect that? I think so, yeah, I can see a lot of positive change in the work that I'm doing, but then all the backlash that I've received reflects both the good and the bad of putting yourself in that position. 
Are you still receiving the amount of backlash you did receive kind of at the height of the movement? Because it did kind of escalate to quite a worrying amount at one stage. Not the same because it's not in the news as much. But as soon as there is something about Black Lives Matter or football is taking the knee or anything to do with racial equality that comes up in the news, then the same people do come back. But to be honest, that small bit of abuse where I could be changing lives, changing lives of young people in schools, that it is, it is worth it. I shouldn't have to put up with it, but it won't stop me from doing what I'm doing. In your opinion, how far is Devon from achieving tangible fundamental change? I think it's quite far away. Small changes are being made, but it's, I need to know that they'll be made consistently without me checking up on someone, without someone making people be held accountable. So I think there is a long journey ahead. Do you and other people in your circle who are from a similar background, whether it be black or from an Asian background or other ethnic background, in your everyday lives, does Devon feel like a different place to what it did a year ago? I think it does because there's a lot more people being honest with their experiences. People aren't hiding away anymore. A lot of people I initially met at the protest would say, I just won't go to this certain area in case I face this abuse. But now people are saying, I'm going to be here whether you like it or not, and you need to deal with your racism, but it's not going to affect me from living my everyday life. I think it feels different because I know that I can now confront people when a situation is wrong and I've got people behind me that will be fighting my corner. So it definitely does feel different. So would you say you feel, you feel safe and you feel more part of the community you grew up in? No, I wouldn't say that I feel safer because just because you can confront someone that doesn't mean you're safe for doing so. When I do confront someone about an incident, for example, I have to be aware that I am putting myself in danger by doing so. But I would say that I feel more part of the community in the fact that I'm not going to hide away anymore. So I feel more confident being myself in the community that I am in. And is that something you would have thought you could achieve looking back from where you were pre George Floyd to where you and the rest of society is now? No, before George Floyd, before the protests, I would just not stay in Devon for that long periods of time because I would avoid something happening. I would rather just not stay here in case, but now I'm saying this is my home and I'm staying here. So whatever your opinion is of that, they have to deal with that separately, but I'm not going to hide away anymore. Maya, thank you so much for joining me today. That's been a real privilege talking to you and hearing about not just your experiences, but the wider community in Devon as well. So again, thank you for joining me today.